welcome to Nightcap Live. I'm Dan Dunn. Tonight we're going to be drinking Japanese whiskey with one of the stars of the hit Netflix series, Never Have I Ever. Mr. Benjamin Norris will be joining us. And when he does, this is all going to make sense to you. I promise it will. Um, Never Have I Ever, of course, is a drinking game in which players reveal things they haven't done. And if any of the other players have done that thing, they have to drink. Everybody knows this. We've all played this game. Uh, but I wanted to try it since, you know, I haven't played in a long time. So let's try. I want to try a few here. I've got a Japanese highball. We're drinking Japanese whiskey. Now I've got a Japanese highball. It's just Japanese whiskey, soda water. I garnished with a little lemon there. And, oh, see that? Hair on the back of my neck stood up. That's how good it is. All right. So I, you at home, if you, you want to play along and never have I ever, uh, have a drink ready. I'm just going to trust you to drink during the game we're going to play. If you don't have a drink ready, go ahead now. I'll wait. All right, you got it? Okay, good. All right, here we go. This is Never Have I Ever, starting right now. Never have I ever crashed a wedding. Never done it. Never crashed. If you've crashed a wedding out there, have a drink. Never have I ever missed an episode of Survivor. That's right. TV show Survivor. It's been on for 177 seasons. I've watched every minute of Survivor. Every episode, every minute of every episode. Let me tell you, when the ladies hear that, they swoon. They swoon. Uh, what else? Never have I ever been a member of the band Arcade Fire. There's like 70 people in that band. I've never been one of them. I've not been in Arcade I wish I was. Uh, I can't lie to you and say I don't wish I was in Arcade Fire, but I've never been in the band. And finally, never have I ever been driving around in my car, and suddenly I felt like I had to fart. Had to fart. And when I go and fart, I accidentally, you know, pooped myself, and then pulled into the parking lot at Burger King, and like ran into the Burger King and went into the bathroom at Burger King and locked the door and like take my pants off. And then I'd take my underwear off and throw them in the trash and clean myself up. And someone's banging on the door going, come on, man, I got to use it. I got to use it. I'm like, calm down. I'm not feeling well. I'm not feeling well. And I put my pants back on and go back and get in my car and go home. Never have I ever done that. Not happen. Um, okay. Memories. Bringing back some bad memories. Okay, so anyway, I invite you to check out my podcast, What We're Drinking with Dan Dunn. Huge hit podcast. Latest episode features uh, MTV's Real World Road Rules and the Challenge stars Susie Meister and Sarah Rice are on the current episode. Next week, we've got legendary screenwriter George Gallo. We've got Lars Ulrich coming up, Maynard James Keenan. And of course, I'm going to be doing a two-parter, the 20 most important cocktails ever, ever. I'm going to want to miss that. What we're drinking with Dan Dunn is available everywhere, podcast, uh, stream. I also want to remind you to check out past episodes of this show, Nightcap Live. They're all up there on Flaviar's YouTube channel. We've had some great guests, Steven Soderberg, Aisha Tyler, Tracy Tudor, Glenn Big Baby Davis, basketball player, and Phil Rosenthal has been on the show. So go back, go to Flaviar's YouTube, which you're on right now, and, uh, and check out some of the past episodes. They're really a lot of fun. You'll see there's a chat box that way. This way, you got a chat box there and you can put questions and comments, really anything you want to get off your chest. You want to share your truth. I'm bitch about the weather. Fire off some questions to me and Benjamin, and we will try to get to them during the show. The other thing we're going to get to during the show is every week, regular viewers know this, we give away a Flaviar membership. Now, I'm not going to lie to you and say that the folks at Flaviar have been writing me because I don't get the messaging right. Every week they say I kind of gloss over the Flaviar membership. So this week I have done something I never, I rarely do, prepare. I've prepared this week. So here we go. Flaviar, and this is off the cuff. I'm not reading this. Flaviar, of course, is a club that brings together fine spirits enthusiasts from all over. Every quarter, comma, I mean, uh, Flaviar sends you samples and provides access, exclusive and highly allocated bottles you won't find anywhere else. 
think what else plus we're always working to keep you educated and entertained with booze themed content such as this really is an amazing way to discover new flavors bond with your friends and family over that miracle known as booze and it really is a miracle look at it there it is hmm. so to win this flaviar membership tonight in that comments box since benjamin's on the show never have i ever i would like you to write in the three most clever never have i ever's the three most clever never have i ever's will win that flaviar membership tonight the judging will be handled by myself and my guest okay never so get clever with it don't go long don't write a novel because Keith, the director, will just throw that right in the trash. Keep it short, succinct, get to the point, be clever, and you will be a Flaviar membership member member uh, by the time this night's out. And now that brings us to the uh, to the really the important part here. Oh, I forgot what we're drinking tonight. The secret flavors of Japan, the other side of Japanese whiskey. We've got three great whiskeys up. We got Ohishi, Fukano, and Koryoshi. Three different Japanese whiskeys. We're going to try them all. Benjamin and I, we're going to break this down like it's a highlight reel from a Flyers game. Best team in hockey, if there was such a thing as hockey anymore. And uh, and I guess I'll bring him on. As I mentioned, he is one of the stars of this. It's a hit show. Big show. I watched several episodes. And I like it. I'm probably not in the demographic they're going for, but I'm just going to tell you right now, I like it. Uh, and he's also a, uh, we went to the same college. This is amazing. Found this out early. We had a conversation. We both went to Temple University. He's doing way better. He's putting his education to better use than me, clearly. Uh, and he's also a New York Rangers fan. So let's bring him on right now, Benjamin Nars. How are you, man? What's up, man? How you doing? That was an unbelievable intro. I really appreciate it. Thank you for joining us. I, we, we're glad to have you, man. So, you know, when I saw you had on your Stanley Cup champions uh, shirt there, I immediately went and changed. Yeah. And I'm glad I did because it's only like 85 degrees. And I'll tell you, I'm moist. Yeah. I say I'm moist right now. So do you go by Benjamin or Ben? Uh, for friends. And you're my definitely my friend now. So we'll go right. Ben. So Ben, I got you. As I mentioned, we both went to Temple University. We found that out yesterday on a call that we had. Go Owls. When, when, when were you there? Uh, I was there, uh, I graduated 2012. So I was there from 2008 to 2012. Um, so like a year after me. Exactly, yeah, exactly okay. a year after you. I think I actually saw you leaving campus the day that I stepped Yeah, in, so. I graduated early, actually, two years early. I was in the Doobie Hauser program. Yeah. Good for you. Fantastic. Great, by the way. I know, I know, I know it. Um, so what did you study at uh, Temple? Uh, so oh, I, by the way, so everybody knows Temple University is in the heart of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, my hometown. Benjamin's from White Plains, New York, not that far away. So right. what did you study at Temple? So I studied film and media arts with a focus in screenwriting and producing. Um, uh, but I was just, you know, I've been making videos ever since I was younger and I was always put myself in, in videos. Um, so acting was kind of just a fun thing that I would do on the side. And then kids, film students started putting me in their short films and whatnot. And it kind of just snowballed from there. But I was, uh, you know, I was, I was a film student. I was making short films at almost every weekend. And then when did you make your way out to California? Uh, two weeks after graduating, I, like, you know, packed my bags, that whole thing, drove across country. Um, so you knew. You weren't screwing around. Like, you, by the time you got out of college, you knew, I'm going for it. I knew, yeah. Actually, so Temple has a really cool study away program where you can you can come to LA and do internships and stay uh, in Burbank. Um, so I did that summer going into senior year. And as a as a snobby New Yorker, I was like, I'm gonna like LA, but obviously I'm gonna want to end up in New York after college. But like, I fell in love with LA, and also I realized the industry is really here. Um, you know, and after when that summer was over, I was like. Yeah, I'm, I'm moving to L.A. when this is done, and I'm, I'm, I'm hitting the ground running, you know? And what was your proverbial uh, big break out here? What was the first kind of juicy role that you got? You know, I, I mean, I, I like to say that this was definitely my, my big break on a large scale. Um, but before this, the first kind of taste of success that I got um, was when, when BuzzFeed had a really big um, scripted department in their, 
for their video team. Uh, one of my best friends who also went to Temple, um, she was uh, she was a writer and producer there. Uh, she brought me in to do some videos, and then from there on, people just kept bringing me in to do videos. Um, so I actually wound up being in a few of their scripted shows uh, when they still had that department. So I'd say that was kind of my first foyer in, into um, into kind of bigger, uh, larger audiences per se. Okay, and then how did Never Have I Ever happen? Never Have I Ever, you know, it was just. I got an audition like anything else. Um, and this, this, you know, I've been out here for eight years. So this far into auditioning, it's like, I never, I try not to let the names who are attached really get to me. Cause it's like, you just don't know if you're going to get it. So I saw Mindy Kaling's name on the sheet and I was like, that would be awesome, but I'm going to curb my expectations. I went into it like any other audition, but I knew, I, I, I like, I knew that I could do this role. It was the kind of thing where I was like, I can, I know how to be Trent. Like I know how to be Trent. And so I went in, I, I did what I, I did what I prepared and it was a lot different from what anyone else did. Cause I could hear through, they had paper thin walls at that casting office, which sucks. And everyone was doing it a different way than me. And I was just like, shit, I don't know. I, I feel like I shouldn't, uh, but I was like, no, nah, I'm going to stick to my guns. And I went in there and did it. And got a call like the next day that it was probably going to happen and then waited two long weeks until I found out it was official. So and you didn't have to go back in again and all day. It was just the no, one time. No call back from my role. Um, thankfully. I, I don't know if other roles that were on my scale had the same situation. All I know is that it was one and done with me. And I was like, that never happens. So that, that felt very good. That's amazing. And you know, I, I don't know if people understand out there, I think there's this idea when you see people on television, you see them in the movies, like, man, they got it made. But I've, I've got a lot of friends who are actors and, uh, and a lot of them that you'll, you've never heard of and probably never will hear of, very talented people. But the process of auditioning to me, I would put it up there with, you know, in my world where I write about wine and spirits and things like that, like, it's kind of like taking the, the master sommelier exam, which is excruciating hard because- right. You're walking in and you're just auditions, auditions, and and 99.9% .9 of the time they're going, you're not getting nope, it. see you later. And it's a lot, a lot of rejection that you that you have to deal with, you know. But you gotta, but you gotta learn to deal with it, you know. You gotta. One thing is you never take it personally, you know. It's not you. Um, you're just not what they were looking for, you know. It's not because you're not good enough. Um, you might be three inches too short. You might look like the director's ex-boyfriend. Like there are so many things that could stop you from getting that role. Uh, and the most important thing to me, I think when I really, when I started changing my mentality, when it comes to auditioning is when I, like I said, stop taking it personally and just make sure that every audition I go into, I'm proud of. That's the only thing you do have control over. Um, so I think once I made that switch in my mind, it got a little easier to digest. Uh, for lack of better terms. And now when you get this one, what's the emotion that you feel when you get the call and you you got it? Like, you know you have it now. Yeah, I, so, you know, it's kind of tricky actually because, uh, you know, with, with projects this big, usually you get pinned, which means they probably have a few other choices and they're just making sure that everyone's uh, like, clear your schedule, you could possibly get this. And so when I got pinned, like I said, it was just, it was the next day that I got pinned. And I've been out here long enough to know that like, you don't take that as, as a yes. So when I got pinned, like I, my heart was going and I was like, it's time to settle down. We'll see what happens. And then it was really a two week process of my agent being like the, the offer should come in. And, and my manager is one of my best friends. He also went to temple, shout out temple. Um, but my manager's in, in, incredible. And Very bright people. By the way, when I was young, the ad campaign was, and I won't say who the guy that did the ad campaign was because he's now not necessarily Temple's favorite. We, we could film. Hey, hey, hey. We but, could uh, film. Anyway, he, he used to do the commercials and he would say, he would list all these very, and he would say, very bright people. They could have gone anywhere. They chose <laughs> Temple. I'm not going to lie. I think about, there are some friends that I graduated with that I'm like, you could have gone anywhere, but you came here. And I'm pretty but the, I have the opposite. I have some friends I went with like, dude, you couldn't have gone anywhere. <laughs> You're just lucky to have gotten in here, you dumb shit. No, uh, so you you got, so you get it, you yeah, manage your culture I, and you're. 
I get pinned and it's just, you know, we're waiting day by day and, and, and I want to make that phone call to my parents. I want to make that phone call to my friends and my manager who's wonderful is just like, the offer is going to come. Like, we know that it's going to come. You just hang in there. And then finally he, he called me and, uh, I let out, I let out a big woo. I like a really loud woo because it was like years of pent up woo in me and so i had to get it all out and i i, I got it out it was amazing it was amazing. it was fun. It's like, comments are rolling in already and when, uh, rob gleason wrote in and said hey i went to temple too we're out here there's a lot of owls out there man a lot of owls uh, bradford jack jack jacob jacobowitz Jacobo. Ben did an amazing job officiating a cool wedding last weekend. Did you do that? I did, yeah. So two, two of my best friends from growing up, I've known them both since I was five years old. So we all went to kindergarten together. Wow. And uh, they, actually, uh, they actually didn't start dating until senior year of college. But, you know, they've been my best friends forever. And, uh, you know, and, and my, my best friend Aaron asked me, you know, we, Elise and I want you to officiate our wedding. He asked me last year and it was amazing. And then COVID happens and, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not really comfortable traveling just yet. And they were like, you know what, we're going to figure out a way to do it. And so we set up a zoom. I had my, my little ring light going. I, I still dressed for the part and, uh, I was still 2020, man. I was still able to marry two of my best friends. It was the, it was, I, I told them it was the biggest honor that I've had, uh, in my entire life so far. I, like no, no doubt about it. Yeah. It's a great, I've done four, I think I've officiated four and it's, I'll tell you, the, the toughest part about officiating weddings is I'm crying more than they are. <laughs> <laughs> I married my brother a few months ago, and I was... <laughs> yeah, that's know, like, Can you get through this or no? Should we bring yeah. in a... You know, go to the bullpen, bring somebody in? Um, well, I, first of all, man, that's such a, an awesome story about how you got your break, and I think we need to drink to that. Please, so let's that do it. is going to lead us to getting into our whiskey. So we're going to go with whiskey number A here. But how much do you know, Ben, about, about Japanese whiskey? Uh, I don't know anything about Japanese whiskey. I, I like whiskey a lot, but I don't take the time to do my research. So that's where you're going to come in. Let me know. All right. So I'm going to say this about Japanese whiskey. It is a category that has exploded in the last decade. Okay. It was not a huge, by any means, was there a, a huge global demand for Japanese whiskey? Not that long ago, but over the last 10 years, there has been, and that's been great. There have been some fantastic whiskeys. I'm hoping we're going to have some now. But that also, there's still a bit of a Wild West feel for Japanese whiskey. I think unlike more established whiskey-producing countries like here and Scotland, um, they don't. Japan has very few rules about what is actually whiskey um, or what makes it Japanese. So I'm just telling everybody this. Full disclosure on Japanese whiskey, you might love it, and, and I hope you do love the whiskeys, but the provenance of the whiskey is murky with, in Japan. Now, there, there was a, uh, they were going to try to change that and introduce some new rules this year at a huge whiskey conference over there that got canceled because of COVID. Um, so, you know, you can get Japanese whiskey that was actually distilled in Scotland or Canada or whatever, and it gets shipped over there, and they put a bottle on it, and they slap a label on it. Another thing I want to just point out, and we're going to try this, with, and this will be with the first whiskey we're drinking, actually, is um, in Japan, if, if you make whiskey with rice as the starch, okay, so Ben, every, every distilled spirit starts with a starch. Right. Be it a potato, right. meat, rye, whatever it is. That starch, they mix it with water, they ferment it. They're, they're going to take the sugars from that starch, convert it into alcohol. That's, that is the basics of alcohol production. So, the, for instance, this first whiskey we're having here, Ohishi, okay, which do you have it there? Uh, yeah, I got it right. And I, I recommend we try it neat. Okay. Or, okay, so we're going to pour this into a, a glass here. This is an Ohishi eight-year-old sherry cask, and this is, uh, we're going to do this, put it in there. So, again, to let you know, this, this whiskey, this, the starch source on this is rice. 
In Japan, they might not be able to label it whiskey. But in the United States, the TTB, which regulates alcohol, recognizes rice as a cereal grain. So they can call it whiskey in the United States. That's what it is called here. So um, let's do a little nosing on this thing okay. first. Right? You don't want to ram your nose in there too far because it'll burn it out. But just And open your mouth a little bit when you breathe it in. All right. So tell me what you're getting on the, on the nose there. Just whatever it is. It doesn't matter. Anything that it evokes. It. Like I'm getting like, like nuts of some sort. Yeah, yeah. Definitely that, that's coming from the oak. I think there's a, I get a little bit of, just a little bit of a smoky thing going yeah. on, like some ash. Yeah, definitely a smoky. And some dark fruit, okay? So now when we're tasting this, Ben, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit, just a tiny bit, swish it around your mouth to coat your palate. Just okay. a little bit like this. Mm, chew it up, just chew it up, get it in there, right? And now take a little bit of a bigger sip and that's where you're gonna, and this is where you're gonna let it, let it do its work in your mouth. Okay, so this distillery was founded in 1872, by the way, and they, again, it's a rice, this is made with rice. A lot of distilleries make it with barley. They, they use Japan's favorite grain to make this. Now, to me, right off the bat, I'm getting the sherry, they're, they're aging this in sherry casks, so what that does, what that brings you is that dark fruit that I talked about. Yeah. The vanilla notes, so you're getting those vanilla notes in there. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely the dark fruits. So, so, so like, so sherry as in like sherry wine. Like, is that the sh same? Sh yeah, sherry is the Spanish wine. Yeah, and that's and they're using they're using casts that were originally used to age sherry to age this. Okay, and uh -huh. um, it spent eight years in the cask. So, what that's doing over the course of eight years is extracting all that woody goodness out of the uh, the cask and. And part of that is the sherry that was in the cask, okay? The residual that's, that's now trapped in the wood. It's drawing all of that out. And, that, and the thing I'm getting that you, you brought up on the nose is this really sort of oily nuttiness to it. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's, um, and a little bit of chocolate as well. I'm getting a little bit of chocolate on that. Um, what I would say, though, is... The, this whiskey to me is a light drinking whiskey. It's a it's a whiskey. So I have a highball going here. Yeah. Which again, it's just soda water and the whiskey. That's a good whiskey for a Japanese highball, which really is one of the most refreshing cocktails you can have. You know? Yeah. Do you have any ice or anything or no? I got ice. I got myself some some uh, sparkling water here too. I got some citrus. I'm all. Whoa. All right. So, so try, a little, try a little sparkling water and put a little bit of this in there with some ice and maybe throw in a little citrus and try that and tell me what you think yeah. um again i want to remind everybody to go to the comments section to questions comments for me or ben or both of us and also the contest tonight to win the flaviar membership is your three most clever never have i ever keep it you know r-rated at best x we can't do at best um Speaking of X rated, I'm not wearing pants today. I'm just letting everybody know that no pants. Yes. I almost did it, but I did. Yeah. But I, did. I, I, I just like to, especially when I wear a uh, hockey sweater, yeah. as we call them, sweaters. That's right. That's right. Woo! Man, man, you could do a slip and slide in my armpits right now. You could <laughs> right off there. That grossing everybody out? I'm trying. Not me. Um, this right. is this is really this is. Like very good with the with the citrus and the and the uh, sparkling water. Refreshing, right? Yeah, yeah, very refreshing. Okay. Um, so I got a question here from Steve from Philly, and wants to know, Ben, what do you what do you normally drink? So if if I'm drinking liquor, it's actually I used to drink a lot more whiskey, um, but I feel like lately I've I've finally switched over to vodka a little bit. Um, I've never been the biggest fan of the flavor of, of alcohol. Um, so I think uh, vodka soda I've been doing, um, but in, in general, I'm kind of like, I'm definitely like a wine kind of guy. 
Why? Yeah. Do you find the uh, so you you were in Philly for really- four years? Yeah. And you came here. How do you find the drinking culture in Los Angeles? I mean, there are a tremendous amount of, of cocktail bars, and well, you know, are you? Yeah. So it's it's kind of funny. It's like it like in Philly, like I was drinking forties, you know, because that's like in college at Temple, like that's kind yeah. of what you did. Like you got forties, and that's what you drank. Um, and like I said, you know, I I really was never the biggest drinker. Um, and I actually used to have an issue. Uh, I, I used to like get sick off of alcohol, like off of, out of like one drink. Like I would just like throw it up to be honest. I know that's gross, but I just like, and whiskey kind of got me out of that. Um, and so when I moved out here, I did like kind of trying to find like whiskey bars or whatnot. Um, but yeah, and it's the whole like mixology thing was, was definitely a bit eye opening to me because I just didn't experience that in Philly at all. Um, but yeah, there's a, there's a really good whiskey bar downtown. I forgot what it's called. Um, seven grand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I accidentally bought a really expensive shot, uh, two of them for my friend and I, uh, didn't realize how expensive they would be. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, it's definitely, it's definitely a mixology kind of, kind of city, you know? And, and I, and I think, and I like that because since I was never the biggest drinker, um, it's cool to like go to a bartender and explain to them exactly what you like. And, and more often than not, they'll, they'll hand you get it for you. And you you know, the thing about Los Angeles is we have such an an influence of the Asian influence here. Yeah. Japanese whiskey is really as a category taken off here in Los in California, especially Los Angeles, uh, San Francisco, San Diego, people are drinking it and it's, Again, I, I'm I'm very interested to see what happens because this category is going to get regulated more stringently. But right now, what I think is exciting about it is they're trying all sorts of things, you know. Yeah. So as long as you're not going to get hung up, and some people do, people get hung up and they go, "Oh man, purists like that's that's made with rice," and I'm I'm right. pissed off. That's not a that's not a real grain. And but my my philosophy has always been if you like it and you enjoy it and drink it and i think right now there's a lot of opportunity and even these whiskeys that uh that may evolve into something else coming out it's the same thing here with with the united states with the rules and regulations of bourbon everybody was trying to conform to be bourbon right and then suddenly you had these sort of maverick craft distillers going we don't need to be bourbon we'll be american whiskey you know we'll be this so i think what you're going to see coming out of japan eventually will be you'll have like sort of the official japanese whiskey designation and then you're going to have sort of sub divisions of that with different you know could be a rice uh, you know maybe they call it rice rice we'll come up with a name later but yeah it's exciting to see what's yeah. it, the fact that that it's so new and that there's so many so many brands getting into the game in japan i think is it lends itself to you know we're going to see some really cool stuff coming out and i think this ohishi is certainly one of them do you want to try you want to move on to the next one, number two? Yeah, let's do it. I'm ready. Let's do it, man. Um, Dan, you, this, really, you, you really know your shit, Dan. You know, I, uh, I've got to lead a very sheltered life. I have not much else to do. So um, this That's one right here is called Fucano. Yes. And uh, this is the Vault Reserve number one. It's Oh, by the way, in case you're wondering on the Ohishi, it's 42.5% alcohol, which means yeah. that's 95 proof. Okay, this one's 40.5%, slightly less alcohol. And again, then when we're nosing this, the reason we don't ram our nose into the glass is that alcohol just blows it right out. Right. And you you can't smell anything else. I feel like that's kind of different from wine tasting. Like wine tasting, you do want to put your nose a little little deeper into the glass. You do. Yeah, you do. So now this one, Fucano, is is a well-known sake and soju producer. Okay. Um, but they're they're now getting into to to doing the uh, to doing the whiskey as well and uh, yeah so the nose on that I'm getting like cinnamon on this it's very different than the one we just had yeah very yeah I mean it, yeah. yeah you know what you're right man they're, that is absolutely the that's the that's the dominant note that I'm getting as well is the cinnamon right yeah and then. Hmm. 
okay? A, a, just a completely different whiskey yeah, than the one we just so had. So different. It, this one's a creamier, certainly a creamier mouthfeel I'm getting there. It's kind of a, uh, man, the first thing that popped into my head was iced tea. <laughs> like there's a tea element going on to this, to this whiskey that yeah, I really it's find. It's like an herbal thing going on. This one is, I think this one, you could just pop an ice cube in there and it's just a really refreshing drink right. to have. Um, and then you notice when you're, when you're doing the tasting, like you got a lot of different things going on in different parts of your mouth too. You got your mid palate here, you got the back and then the finish. When people talk about the finish, they mean is now you've had a time, you've had some time to sort of take it in, absorb it to whatever. That first burst of flavor we're going to get, the first thing we're talking about, you know, we talked about the cinnamon on the, on the palate. We're talking about like that plum and that tea notes that I'm getting. Now we've sat on a little bit, let it, did it, it's done its work. And what I find on this finish is it's very subtle. The, le the previous one, I think, had a little more oomph to it on the finish. It kind of carried, it lingered a little bit more. This one, in and out. Quick, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, it was it was heavier on drinking it though. The actual like texture seemed like way way denser, you know. It did. Okay. Um. But yeah, I think I, I think I agree with you. You definitely have a way more refined palate than I do. I'm definitely just trying to keep up right now. But like I said, you really know your shit. Well, here's the thing, man. I always tell people it's not about it's not a contest, right? Although some people act like it is, it isn't a contest. It isn't about you know. You, everybody's built different. Everybody's bodies are built different. And you might pick up things that I have that I, I not even remotely taste. Right. right. But that's because, you know, your receptors are different than mine. Now, there are certain things that I think shine through. You know, like you said, when you mentioned the cinnamon, that was spot on. I got that right, right. away. Uh, but, you know, there's no wrong answer. And I tell people that all the time. When you're, when you're tasting... If you get something that you're like, man, that again, iced tea. I don't know, it, this, this doesn't taste like iced tea, but the very <laughs> first note I got reminded me. It was yeah. reminiscent of iced tea. So uh, we got a question here from Ed Abrams. Said he hasn't tried Japanese whiskey. Does it taste like scotch, bourbon, rye? What's similar? Um, you know, Ed, I, first of all, I, you know, it's, it's kind of broad. I mean, there's so many different scotches, you know, like there's right. peaty scotches, there's non-peated scotches, um, bourbon, same thing. I, I would, to me, Japanese whiskey feels more similar to Irish whiskey. I find Irish whiskeys and, and also spiritually the same because Irish whiskey is having its resurgence now too. 20 years ago, there were about three Irish whiskeys available in the world. Now there's hundreds, you know. Um, Irish whiskey tends to be a little bit lighter approachable would be a word I would use. You know, if you're not a seasoned whiskey drinker, Irish whiskey's like that. And I also feel the same, certainly about the, the two whiskeys that we've had so far, right? They don't, not, do you find either one of those to be obtrusive? Ben? No, like where, no it, both, both went down really, really easily. I, I think the first one went down a bit easier for me than this one, um, but I, so, I, I went through a long time of pretty only, uh, pretty like only drinking um, uh, bullet bourbon. Okay. Um, and like compared to these first two, like which, which one would that lean more towards? Was that, is that, would that be the middle one? Would that be the second one that we tried? We more like, be more like a, a bullet bourbon? Yeah, yeah. I would say so because the second one, I think had a little bit more wood influence on it. And it, okay. and it, it you know, um, but I don't think, in my opinion, a bullet bourbon is a is a uh, substantial whiskey, and I'm not saying that to slight these whiskeys, but what I mean by that is it's it's more robust, more powerful, and that's not for everybody. Right. Okay. Yeah. So you know, some people uh, you get into these um, sort of legacy bourbons, you know, that are, that 
they're just they're powerful whiskeys. They're whiskeys for for drinkers who are not faint of heart. You know? right. <laughs> Whereas I think this one, if you're not a whiskey drinker, this is a good entry. This is a good way in. Right. Well, and, and and by that I mean easily though. Yeah, you may never you may never want to go with I I mean I have I know people that love whiskey. They love it. But they there's certain things they're not gonna go near. They're not gonna go near the big peat bombs from Scotland. They're not gonna go for for the, you know, the high proof bourbons that have that, you know, that real heat of the of the alcohol on it. They're just never gonna do it. But they drink a lot of whiskey. They tend to their palate, they want lighter whiskeys. And that's what this is to me. So um, let's, uh, you want to move on to number three? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's do it, man. The number three is uh, Kuriashi, eight-year-old. Okay. And uh, this Matsui distillery that makes it, they keep a pretty low profile. There's no distillery visits. It's uh it's a bit of an enigma. So that kind of harkens back to what I said earlier in the show about um, there being, <laughs> I'm trying to finesse what I'm saying here, mysteries to Japanese whiskey. Um, and by mystery, I mean they can get away with saying a lot of things that you can't get away with saying with bourbon and scotch. And that's great for now, but that's going to change. So. Um, so would this not like, to say that any of these this, whiskeys are? Would this be like the most hipster out of the three? Then would you say? It would be a. Um, so this is the one that actually this is not made with rice. This is made with grain, and so this is actually a. Uh, it's made with malted barley. Okay. So this is actually whiskey. In Japan, they can call this whiskey. The first two, they it's made with rice. They wouldn't call it. So let's. Uh, is it the more hipster? I don't know. Says me in my hockey sweater. Says me with my man bun living in it. With a- the bun. By the way, I was watching the show. So is the hair in the show? You have long hair in the show. Is that your hair? Yeah, yeah. I thought maybe you had a hat with a wig or something. No, no. That that is that is my that is my my actual hair. That's right. And, and is I, that how you always wore your hair? You did it for the role. I I did it for the role. I mean, usually I put it up just because it's a it's it's a lot to handle, especially in the California heat. Um, but I actually, uh, I actually auditioned with the backwards hat on because I knew that Trent, I never auditioned with a hat, but I just knew Trent would wear a hat. Um, and so I walked in looking exactly like I do, uh, on the show actually. So it worked. I dressed for the part. So you came in, in episode three, right? Uh, so I, I had two very, very quick moments in one and two. Uh, and then I came in in episode three, and actually, what was pretty cool is I signed on for I think maybe four episodes, and then uh, the they liked the work that I was doing, and then eventually they wrote me into eight episodes. Eventually, so it was kind of like uh, I, I hustled my way to um, I, I grinded my way to, to a few more episodes than than originally planned. And now, what what is the status of the show now? So we just got. Announced that we we got a season two, um, Congratulations. Out next year I believe. You know, fingers crossed that everyone does their part and we uh, we can get back to work uh, in a bit. Right. Uh, but yeah, we got a season two, and and we actually there was an article that just came out today. Netflix released um, their numbers, and uh, we hit over forty million households, which is like. It's pretty cool. Man. That's incredible, man. Congratulations. Thank you, man. Thank you. It's really, it's really, uh, it's surreal. It's very, very surreal. Got a uh, comment, question from, for you, from Mia Apasoni. Okay. It said, Benjamin, I like the role of Sandra's foster kid at Superstore. That's right. Any other roles coming on TV, major networks besides Netflix? So, so she's mentioning, so I, I did have a, a small um, guest star on the last season of Superstore. Uh, one of the series regulars adopted me, uh, even though I'm, even though he's 17 years old. Um, and that was silly and goofy and I loved it. Um, there's no new roles right now coming out. Um, the industry is, is moving very, very slowly at the moment. Um, there are a few auditions going on right now, but um, right now we're in a bit of a, a standstill. 
Um, but uh, Mia, I hope that very soon I'll have good news for you. So fingers crossed that things will happen soon. Wear a mask, Mia. Sooner we can all get back to work here, we can see more Ben. Um, all right, let's get on this. Let's get on this whiskey here. Again, this is a Kuryoshi eight-year-old, and the nose. I got some nuts. I got some almonds. I got some. Uh, yeah, definitely like nuts on on this one. And then on the palate. It's got a little tropical thing going on for me. I'm getting a little melon in there, a little bit of. Um... I was gonna say like I was gonna say citrus or maybe like stone fruits for for me, um, like almost like peach. But maybe that's because I just bought peaches, so maybe that's why peaches are on my mind. No, I get that too. And then there's um, I got a little okay. bit of like a, a toffee thing going. Toffee. By the way, when you were in Philly, did you pick up any of the Philly accent at all while you were there? You know, I really, I really try my best at, at accents, and Philly is the number one that I just, like, can't get a grasp on. But if I could take a crack at it, we got Anna South What's, Philly. Go watch your birds play. Oh, Wooder. 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 And Beggle. Um, yeah, got, got Anna watch Beagle. Go, birds. Go, birds. That's Go, birds. All I have. Go down and get a steak and a hoagie, you know? Hey, go to the Poconos. You get yeah. to the Poconos this weekend? Um. <laughs> Philly is tough. I actually think the toughest one might be Pittsburgh. Oh, yeah, Pittsburgh I can't even I can't even come close to. The, the Philly and the Baltimore one are, ki are kind of similar. The, the yeah. Wire is my favorite show of all time. I've seen it five times. Very proud of it. Um, but that they're, like, kind of similar. Um, but Philly... The accent is a perfect metaphor for who Philly is as a city. It's just like, we are us, and we don't care that you guys aren't us. You know what I mean? I love that place, man. I love it. I got a question from Jim Caring, who says, Dan, what's on the record player behind me? Right here. The Clash, London Calling, which is also on my arm. And I did not plan this, but yeah, I mean, I planned <laughs> that too, but yeah. See, we go here. You got that? Is it? That's pretty spot on, too. That's that. Is that? Oh, no, I can't do it because damn hockey jersey. I'm taking this thing off by the end of the show, by the way. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, I, I'm going to rock out, too. As soon as this show is over, I'm going to drink the rest of this Japanese whiskey. I'm putting on some vinyl. I'd invite you over, Ben, but... Social distancing, can't Social do it. Distancing. We can't do it. One day. Someday. Someday. One, absolutely. What part of your live what part of Los Angeles do you live in? I'm in Echo Park, so I'm on the east side. I've been I I, uh, I spent a year on the west side. Um didn't love it. All my friends were on this side, so and then I moved here. I've been in Echo Park for almost eight years and I I love it. It's love a it. for people out there that are not super familiar with Los Angeles. So I live in Venice. He's in Echo Park. It isn't really that far away, but when, if COVID wasn't happening, traffic-wise, it is far away. But um, but it's LA is so great in that it really is different worlds. Because yeah, one hundred percent. Echo Park may as well be Bombay, India, compared yeah. to here. Like it's just. It's it's so different, and, different. and that's oh. what I love about this place. Yeah, and that that's why I always tell people, uh, you know, because I I have so many like homies back back in New York and stuff like that, and and when people come to visit LA, like when you spend four or five days in LA, it's not enough. Like you have to look at it LA as a county, not a city, and you have to you have to explore each of those towns within that county. Um, you know, you go up to Topanga, and it's a completely different world. Uh, you know, and, and then Malibu, you, go, okay. you, gotta, you know, it's all so different and it's all it all is so cool in their in their own way. You know, that's that's why I love L.A., man. It's a lot of different cultures and, and landscapes and areas. It's great. man. And, and as we talked about earlier, an incredible bar scene out here, restaurant scene. And we're all looking forward to getting back to that. I feel like, Ben, well, first of all, let's have a little bit more whiskey. Yeah, and, please. You know, this is a drinking show, after all. Um, I think we should get to some of this. Uh, all right, I'm going to give you guys two more minutes. If you have not gotten your uh, three best, most clever, never have I ever's in, 
This is it. You got two more minutes to enter to win the Flaviar membership. Um, what are you doing, Ben, during quarantine? What am I doing? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not going many places. Uh, I, I, I try to do my part. Um, but uh, actually, so I moved, I, my girlfriend and I moved in together the day the shutdown happened on, on March 16th. So, and then when did she move out? Uh, <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow after, the, after this interview. Um, Talk about getting thrown into the, I mean, that, that's a test of a relationship. Like, let's move in and never leave. Yeah. It truly is. We, we talk about how it's almost like you're moving in on hyperspeed, you know? It's like you move in and then all of a sudden you're experiencing all of these things that you might not have experienced within five years or maybe ever because, you know, let's be honest, no one in the world right now has ever experienced anything like this. Um, so it's been, it's been really interesting, but it's, it's, you know, it's made us stronger and we've been having a great time. Um, but what we've been doing is we've been like collaborating together for the first time ever. You know, she's a very talented writer uh, and actress. Um, so we actually put out some funny sketches. Um, she's working on a play. I'm, I'm Where can people find these sketches? So if you, if you follow me on Instagram uh, at Ben A. Norris, um, that's where we post all of our, uh, all of our sketches. Um, and then also I have a YouTube channel. Uh, it's just Benjamin Norris. That's the YouTube channel and I'll post on there as well. Um, so we've been having a good time, but we've also been like, you know, just the two of us going to the park every now and then and just anything that we could do to, to stay sane and a lot of cooking, a lot of cooking. So that's good. I mean, you, uh, I think, as you said, we, we've, none of us have ever had to deal with this, but I, I certainly think that entering into a living arrangement together the day before this happened, yeah. and the fact that you guys are still going strong, that's... We're going, that's, strong. We're going, we're going strong, man. I mean, we're, awesome, man. It, it's really like, you know, you, you just, like I said, you deal with so many, you know, it's just, it's all uncertainty. Like we have no idea what the future holds, you know? And that's, that's difficult for one person, let alone two people living in the same space. And I think we've done a really good job of any time there were hard moments of us, it's us against the world. So it's us battling the world, not each other, obviously. But I think we do a good job of like letting that fear or emotion or whatever sink in, have our moment. And then we laugh about it after. And we're just like, this shit is nuts, you know? Cause like, You've got to have a sense of humor about anything that happens, man. I mean, I'm, I'm a comedy guy. I, I think laughter makes the world go around. And uh, at the end of the day, you just got to laugh because, like, we're all in this together. And we're all in this together, okay? Everyone? We are. Well, Speaking of comedy, you know what else I was listening to earlier today? What were you listening to? Carly Simon, No Secrets. <laughs> my, my father would be proud of you right now. I'm good. I'm good with that. Anybody got a problem with that? No, I don't think so. I'll get the Flyers jersey on. That's from Bullies. Um, all right. Ben, let's get to it, man. Let's 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 yeah. go through these never have I ever's and see who we think should be the winner here. Okay, let's do it. And pandering will get you places. I'm just telling you right now, as I'm looking at Christopher Blade, it says, Never have I ever met Dan Dunn, like the Rangers or Penguins. And won anything on this show. It's pretty good. That's good. He's really fishing. He's really. <laughs> he is. <laughs> All right, Christopher Blade, you're in the running. Candle Power? Is that really a name? Is it Candle, it's a... Candle Power? All right. It's a sick name. Never have I ever been in a bank. A guy comes in, robs at a gunpoint, use my truck as his getaway car. Nope. All right. That's dark. It would have been run a 5K race, but naked. Never been bitten by a mama ferret. Probably. Like, you, if any of these things have happened, you got a drink, Ben. Uh, Me too. No, 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 none yet. Never woke. Oh, uh, Ron's wood turning shop and stuff says never woke up in a field with a dead battery and a real un. Oh, come on, no, I'm not doing that. Okay, that's come on. You almost had you though. You're out, Rons. Sorry. Salon DMS, never have I ever lied in this game. Looked in the upper right corner of your bedroom at night. 
slap the bag of rice. I'll, I'll, I probably looked in the upper right corner of my bedroom many, many times. I think I, think I have too. So we'll yeah. drink. All right. Eduardo Xavier Segovia says, never have I ever ran over a drunk dude, taken to jail, then let go in the following 10 minutes because the cop realized that, what? What is this? Who, Keith, who's putting this stuff through here? Come on, your ass. Skylar the Sass. Never had a new fashioned. I only like the old kind. Oh, see, so Skylar's going for the humor. That's good. All right. That's good. Uh, never been defeated at Stratego. Never put it in. No, nah, can't do it. Pretend you know, or you can't. You know what I think is happening right now? I think our producers are drinking whiskey as well because they're letting things through. I think they're letting it they, through. They themselves do not want me to read on the air. I'm just going to stop it. It never put it in the, and then I'll stop there. Ooh, I think it. we all know what was going there. Okay. Um, Adam Womack says, never have I ever been more than three states away from home. Sorry, Adam. You've, ne you've been three states away from home. You're from, yeah. No, no, but I have been. Wait, never have I ever. Oh, so, right? oh I so get it. I have done that, so I have to drink. I'm on the so, I, I know right, how. I get it. All right. Thanks. I don't know. You're younger than me, man. You've played this game. I know. You, you did graduate a whole year before me, so. That's true. And I am, you know, at least a year or two older than you. Of course. And you're on the show, never have ever. It's an unfair advantage. Right? That's right. So, so the fact that. I have done that means I have to drink, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay, got it now. I got it. Rules understood. Hmm. Um, oh, Adam Womack continues, never is it, I have ever blamed someone else for my own mistakes. I mean. Good. Yep, I have. Yeah. I've done that. I feel like he's lying. See, you know? they're smart because they just want to make us drink. Yeah, right? I, say, okay. He's probably And lying. then uh, he's also never backed down from a fight. Uh, yeah, I've definitely backed down from fights. <laughs> I'm proud of it. So do I have to drink because I backed down from fights? No, you've never backed down. Oh, wait, you have. I have. No, you, wait. Wait, never have I ever backed down from a fight. Have I you? never has, so have I have, so I have to drink. Okay. Wait. Yeah, sure. I'm sure. smart. I'm, I'm proud to admit that I've backed. There's been a few people in my life where they've gone, you got a problem? Oh, yeah, and I have backed down. Okay, yeah. got it. You know, you, we've all been there where the guy goes, you got a problem? And you're like, no. No, I don't have a not, problem. Right. Nope, not at all. Problems, but not. it's not you. Probably. Yeah. But. Yeah, exactly. All right, Sandy Abrams. Never have I ever broke my toe skinny dipping. Never woke up with clothes on that weren't mine. No. Never got caught on a ski toe rope. Yeah. yeah. Those. I'm okay. a big skier, snowboarder, so that's got it. Yeah. Christopher Blade, oh, the, do we already do that? Oh, we already did Chris, Christopher Blade's black, back, <laughs> excuse me, it's the whiskey. Uh, Rob Gleason, never have I ever been to Japan, been to a hockey game, or won a Flaviar membership on this show. See, Rob, that's clever. I said, be clever. I have been to a hockey game. I have won a Flaviar membership. Have you been to Japan? Mm-mm. Mm -mm. Okay, we're getting down to the end here. Skylar's a sass. It says, never have I ever had gin. Where are you living, Skylar? Just, yeah, I don't know. I'm, oh, which says I'm ashamed. Um, <laughs> never have I ever dove into a, into a natural body of water while holding a knife in my teeth. No. It's done in the old movie. I've not done that either. Okay. Never had to call for backup. I have. Been on a date that I didn't like, and I, hey man, can you show up and? Right, I'm wondering like what kind of context it is. You know, I I, I grew up playing sports, so I feel like in the context of my sports, I have technically asked someone to come back me up. Let me hold on. Let me consult. What's that? Huh? They said you have to drink. Uh, yeah, okay. got drink. All right, and finally, oh, not finally, we're almost there. Tim McIntyre says, "Never have I." Ever won a Flaviar membership, Tim? Behind the behind it here. Never have I ever really liked a Justin Bieber song. I have. Sorry. Yeah, like I have. the beats. I'm a believer. I, I used to be a hater, and and uh, I turned I turned it around. I turned it around. 
And never have I worn Crocs. I haven't done that either. I'm drinking about the Bieber, not the not the Crocs. Never worn Crocs. Ed oh. Abrams is ne- Ed Abrams has never been French kissed by his Labrador Retriever. I have been French kissed by Ed Abrams Labrador Retriever. <laughs> we actually had a um, bit of a fling, Ed, and I don't know if now is the time to talk about it. I don't know. I don't know about that. Yeah, Ed, Ed hit me up later. I'll tell you what happened. Hmm. Placed a collect obscene phone, a collect call. Wow. I'm going to say Ed's in my demographic, age-wise. Or dropped my last cigarette in the toilet, fished it out, dried it out, and smoked it. Oh, that's gross. You can't win. Well, they never Uh, did it, so. Oh, man. And then, uh, all right, that's it. That's what we got. So, what do you think, Ben? Um, I like the one, the guy, the first guy that said he's never met me. He's never liked the Rangers, although you're probably not going to vote for that. Or the Penguins. I'm sure you don't like the Penguins. Yeah, I don't like um, the Penguins. Or want anything on this show. That's Christopher Blade. I, I, wonder, I wonder if that one sticks out the most because it's the first one we heard. And, and it, was, it, was actually, it, was very, it was actually very personal. I mean, it was about you. It was about yeah. the Rangers. It was about the, the show. I mean, I would say. It wasn't going for the laughs. Yeah. The only other one I would say that it kind of really jumped out was Rob Gleason with never been to Japan, never been to a hockey game, and never won a Flaviar membership on this show. So you, so you want to decide between those two? No, I want you to decide. Oh, I have to decide between You're them. the guest. What are their names again? Rob, Rob Gleason. That's okay. the one I just said. And then the first one was is... Um, Christopher Blade, who's never met me, never liked the Rangers or Penguins, and never won anything on the show. I'm not going to lie. Christopher Blade is a sick name. So Christopher Blade's I, a good like. Sick. I mean. Have you seen a new Christopher Blade movie? Oh, dude. Right? And it was as, almost as good as Christopher Blade 2. Don't cut me. It, just, it yeah. keeps getting better. I, that's Blade, a... The, you know what it is? It's a, sharp, it's a sharp name. That's what it is. It's a very sharp <laughs> Oh, no. No, you did No, you did All right. You know what? I think we got to give it to Christopher Blade. Yeah, thank you. We're both fans of the Christopher Blade film franchise. It doesn't really franchise. exist. Yes. Christopher Blade, congratulations, man. You have won. Uh, Chris Blade, yes, man. Yes. Yes. Uh, you have won the Flaviar membership. You are part of the, the, this exclusive club. That um, Ben, you're getting a membership, right? They're going to give you one. I sure. Think. Yeah, absolutely. I think they're giving you one. Yeah, I'm going to, I'll make some calls. See what I can do. Please, please make some calls. This has been a lot of fun, man. I really this enjoyed uh, hanging with you on this, and I want to remind everybody to to check out Never Have I Ever on Netflix. I'm four episodes in, and I. Again, and I'm not, I hope this doesn't seem condescending. I genuinely like the show, and it's not a show that was made for me. I, no, I get it. That has been the general consensus, which is so cool about this. All my family members, everyone who are older than the demographic that it, that it probably was made for, everyone is like, wow, this show actually is very special. And I, 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 I am so lucky to have been a part of, of something this good and um, kind of, it, it, it's just very current. It's very of the times right now. It's the writing. And by the way, before I say this, um, Keith, can you let me know who's on the show next week so I can plug that? <laughs> that in there. Thanks. I think, it's, I think uh, Mark Summers, by the way. I think I already know who's on. Who is it? Mark Summers. He, uh, he, uh, if, if you grew up in the 90s, you know who Mark, who Mark Summers is. And you were only... You're only I'm, I'm a year older than you. Well, I know who he is. Mark no, Summers. Summers is. Guy from uh, that thing. Yeah, um, Double Dare. Double Dare. That's it, Double Dare. That's the thing. He's on. I love that you know who's on the show next week, and I don't. I don't I know mean, how that happened. I don't know. Do you want to step in for me next week? No, it's okay. Week, join Ben Norris and, and Mark Summers on the show. I'm out. Um, but uh, I, I, I do, uh, what I was saying is the writing on the show is very clever, and it's very mature, like the dialogue. I, I mean, uh, the, the female lead's name on the show is uh, Maitre. She plays Davy. Davy is the, the Davy. Name. That's right, and she's fifteen on the show, right? Yeah. 
And I wonder, do, I wonder if 15 year olds are really that smart and talk that way. I, I think so. And also, just so you know, I mean, Maitreyi was not much older than her character when she played that, that part. And uh, I, this girl has a very, very long future and bright future ahead of her. This was the first thing she's ever done. She was found from a 15,000 person casting call. Uh, she had never acted in anything in her life. And uh, she knocked it out of the park, and she is she is a, a joy to be around, and she's the captain of our ship, and it's it shows, it shows, it comes across. She's very talented, and as is you know, I again, check it out. Never have I ever on Netflix. Follow Ben on the Instagram at Ben A Norris. Where'd you come up with that? Speaking of uh, clever, it, it took me. I, I would we would have to have another hour of this for me to explain exactly where I came up with that. And as always, I want to thank you at home for tuning in and joining us. I know you have a lot of, uh, I, no, you don't. Yeah, no. what, what are you doing? Nobody's doing it. Um, and please check out Flaviar. Become a member. It's very cool. Every quarter you're going to get a box. Gonna have a, so you're, this is where I'm going to screw up the messaging, and then they're going to go, you mess it up. Just go to Flaviar and read it so I don't have to do it. And again, next week our guest is who? Ben? Mark Summers. Mark Summers, the guy from. The producer, the legend, Mark Summers. That guy. Love him. And uh, again, everybody, thank you so much. And cheers, brother. And I really appreciate this. Thank you very much, man.